Welcome to this short lecture on immune cells. This particular lecture will build upon the first lecture that we did with the overview of the immune system. So if you haven't watched that one, I encourage you to have a quick look. So when we look at the immune, system, the immune cells of the immune system, basically they will be broken into two functional groups. Those that partake in the innate response and those that partake in the adaptive response. When we think about the innate response or the innate part of the immune system, this is what we think or consider as the first line of defense to protect us against invasion and pathogens and antigens. So this is an older evolved process. So it's always there and it will, its response is going to be the same regardless of the invader. Whereas when we look at the adaptive immune system and particularly the adaptive immune cells, this is a more recent evolved process and it's very specific to the type of pathogen or invader that is coming into us. Now when we look at either one of these immune categories, basically the function of the cells are to do a number of things. One being in phagocytosis, this is to eat things up, to, um, to swallow things that seem to be foreign or dangerous, to produce inflammation or to modulate immune system. Um, to present antigens, to kill or to or to kill cells that are either infected or um, tumor-like, and finally to produce antibodies. Now let's go to the image here. So this is a schematic image, so it's quite busy at this point, but I'll w walk you through it. So firstly in black on the outside is a bone. So this is a schematic drawing of a bone, and this is important for this is where our immune systems start. Around the bone are these red pipes, so this is to indicate blood and blood vessels. And then finally the blue box is all the other extracellular tissue of your body. Down here we just have a small black box which refers to lymphoidal tissue in your body, specifically secondary lymphoidal tissue, which looks at certain things that are either encapsulated lymphoidal tissue like your spleen or lymph nodes, or um, non-encapsulated lymph tissue like um, mucosal like lymph tissue. So that's your diagram and that's what we're going to work off. So we, when we look at the, your immune system or the immune cells of your immune system, if we were in the embryo a lot of these cells originated either from the yolk sac or the liver. But when we move to postnatally, so as we become infants into children and adults, all this and all your immune cells are made within bone marrow. So this is why we've drawn a bone. Now, predominantly this will happen in the um, red bone marrow. So these are bones like your vertebra, your sternum, your clavicle, your ribs, sometimes even to a degree in the long bones like your femur and, and tibia. So the cell that makes all your um, immune cells is this one here that I've drawn, which is what we call a hemopoietic stem cell. Now that particular stem cell, there's thousands and millions within all your red marrow, but this particular type will create all the immune cells, specifically the ones we're going to do now. Now the division, so the differentiation that they will divide into are two main types. We have this green group here, which is going down a myeloid-like stem cell or a myeloid line, whereas this one over here in blue is the lymphoid line. Now in many cases the blue, so the lymphoid line will partake more in the adaptive immune system, however the one exception being this one being the natural killer cell, whereas the green, the green cells will manifest and be partake in the uh, innate response. So they're, they're going to be more the innate first line defense immune cells. So let's start off with the green. So this is the myeloid line and this is in no particular order. Firstly we have a response which we call phagocytosis. So there are a number of cells that partake in phagocytosis. There are neutrophils, there's eosinophils, and then there's macrophages and monocytes. So let's have a look at see how they form. Firstly, in the myeloid line, one group of macrophage or one group of phagocytes are going to go down what we call a mononuclear um, lineage. So they've only got one kind of lobed 
nucleus. And the first derivative is what we call a monocyte. So the monocyte are actually a early precursor type phagocyte or um, macrophage-like cell that really stays within blood and they partake in phagocytosin, so eating certain extracellular uh, pathogens, for example, within the blood. Now, if the monocytes were to migrate out into the tissue of your body, now sometimes this could just be in connective tissue or um, certain other types of extracellular tissue, but sometimes they are specific to certain locations, like in your lungs, where you can have alveoli macrophages, sometimes in your kidneys, which are mesangial cells, or sometimes in your liver, which we call Kupfer cells. But they essentially are still macrophages and they play an important role in digesting and eating things that aren't supposed to be in that tissue, such as bacteria or um, disease cells. Now, some macrophages will actually move into lymphoidal tissue, such as the spleen or um, lymph nodes, and they also partake in certain roles within there, um, not only phagocyt phagocytosin, but they also become antigen presenting cells. Now, just as a, a point here that I need to just make, um, I will go into depth on separate videos on each one of these cell types. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth with these today. This is more of a broad overview. So these macrophages can also be in lymphoidal tissue to be antigen presenting cells. So that's one lineage from the myeloid line. Another lineage is what we call the mast cell. So the mast cell are granular sites. So they had preformed granules in them. And these actually uh, as immature precursors migrate out of the bone into the blood and then finally they come into the tissue where they mature and ultimately d differentiate. In them they have preformed granules. In most cases they're going to be histamines and heparin and they are very important for initiating and modulating the inflammatory response. So these guys can be located in connective tissue such as just under your skin around your blood vessels, in your mucosa, such as in your gut, or in your bronchioles. And these are some common areas where if these mast cells degranulate, they're gonna cause inflammation in that area, such as hay fever, such as vasculitis, or dermatitis. Another line of the myeloids go down a path that we call a megakaryocyte, and then they, this big, large cell, as it moves into the blood, breaks into finer cells which we call platelets and the platelets also help with modulating the inflammatory response but they also have a role in clotting so they also have that effect in the immune system. Now finally this group of cells which kind of differentiate from the myeloid line comes under the banner of PMN which is polymorphonuclear granulocytes, which means they appear to have multiple kind of nuclei just through the lobes, which is just different to these mononuclear ones in the monocytes and macrophages. So they look like they have multiple nuclei in their um, cytoplasm, but they also have preformed granules within them. So they are also granulocytes like we saw in the mast cells. However, there's some differences here. Well, one of them is the neutrophil and the eosinophil are also phagocytes. So they do play a role in eating things up like we saw with the macrophage. The neutrophil, which comes off this line, they are the most abundant white cell and they are very important in the early phases of inflammation and injury. So they're the most abundant white cell. And as I said, they have a strong uh, role within phagocytosis. Another one is eosinophils. So eosinophils are the next abundant cells. So about two to five percent of white blood cells from this lineage are eosinophils. So they do also have a phagocytic function, and they seem to also have a an effect with parasites. So that's one role that they do have. Finally, the least abundant white blood cell is your basophil, and this one doesn't do any phagocytosis but it does have preformed granules in it, which seem to have a role within uh, allergic responses. But it's important to note that these three cells only remain within the blood. So that is the 
all the lineages that are coming from the myeloid line. Coming across to the blue, we've got the lymphoid line. As I said earlier, one early division that comes out is the natural killer cell. So these particular cells generally will stay within the blood, but one of their role to, to partake in is to kill off damaged um, or infected cells. So if you have intracellularly affected cells like virus cells, these will do the killing. Also important for the destruction of cancer cells. So any kind of cell that seems to be dysfunctional, the natural killer cells have a strong role in. It's important to note that this branch is actually part of the innate immune response, which is similar to what we saw over here. Finally, we move to the last type of cell that comes out of the lympho, lymph, lymphoblastic line, and this is the B and T cell lymphocytes. Now, the reason why they're named that is because where they first mature in the primary lymphoidal tissue. The B cells will primarily um, mature or mature in the primary lymphoidal tissue of the bone, and that's why they're called B, whereas these group, they actually mature in the primary lymphoidal tissue of the thymus, and that's why they're called T. Specifically, B cells are important for the production of antibodies, and T cells are a cell-mediated response, so they're a very specific type of response to the antigen that is being responded against. Um, two, two main divisions being the helper cells and the cytotoxic T cells, um, but a lot of those will go into the blood and then the, both of them, Bs and Ts, will migrate to the secondary lymphoidal tissue, as we can see here with the L, and they seem to have their specific differentiation in that tissue. So when they are once they have responded to their specific antigen, that's where their final level of differentiation occurs. Another final cell just to be mindful of is what we call dendritic cells. And these cells come from actually both lineages and their job primarily within the lymphoidal tissue is to phagocytose um, foreign material and then antigen present it to, in most cases, the T cells. And so these two group of cells, we've already spoken about macrophages, but also the dendritic cells are the antigen presenting cells. And so that is essentially all the different cell types within your immune system. We've seen that there's two main divisions being the myeloid line and the lymphoid line. Mostly on this side, they're, take, they're partaking in the role of the innate system, whereas most of this is in the adaptive system. But it's important to note that they will work together to do things like phagocytosis, inflammation, antigen present, presentation to kill infected cells or cancer cells and to produce antibodies which are important for memory as well. So that's the immune cells. We're going to move on to subsequent videos which will focus on each subtype.